When the end comes and there's no trace of us on this planet, when it seems that everything has already been destroyed or disappeared, there will be something left. It is a practically indestructible living thing. It doesn't matter if an asteroid has hit Earth. It doesn't matter if we destroy ourselves amid war. Even if a supernova of a nearby galaxy explodes, there will still be a survivor. It is the tardigrade, or better known as water bears. It is a phylum of water-dwelling eight-legged segmented microanimal. The tardigrades were first described in 1773 by the German zoologist Johann August Ephraim Goes, who, after observing them under a microscope, called them Klein Wasserbären, which translated into English as water bears. This about the way these organisms move. Four years later, the naturalist Lazaro Spallanzani dedicated himself to studying these creatures by baptizing them with the name of tardigrades, in reference to the slowness with which they move. Tardigrades can be found almost anywhere on the Earth's surface, specifically in the water film that forms in ferns, mosses, and wet lesions. Although there are also tardigrades inhabiting ocean waters, rivers, lakes, and lagoons, and they probably even have tardigrades on the moon. Yes, on the moon, and later you will find out why. Although in general, to see a tardigrade, you will need a microscope Older adults can be seen with the naked eye since they can measure up to half a millimeter. As for the general structure of a tardigrade, observation has allowed us to know that their bodies consist of five undifferentiated segments. A slightly differentiated blunt-shaped head segment that contains the mouth with a pair of internal stilettos and occasionally eye spots or spots and sensory serous. The remaining four segments each have a pair of ventrolateral legs terminated with claws between four and eight. The first three pairs of legs are used for locomotion, while the fourth is used to anchor. The small body of these water bears is covered with a layer called cuticle, which can be of different colors. The tardigrades are oviporous and undergo direct development without larval phases. They lack circulatory and respiratory systems. They do have nervous, excretory, and reproductive systems. The tardigrades feed on bacteria, algae, cryptogams, rotifers, nematodes, and other microscopic invertebrates. They can even feed on other tardigrades. Yes, there are cannibal tardigrades. As you can see, tardigrades are actually quite simple organisms and seem to have nothing special. But how can they survive conditions that would cause a mass extinction? The answer to this question is in a biological state in which tardigrades can enter when the biological conditions are too extreme. This state consists of entering suspended animation. When a tardigrade enters this process, his body only remains with 3% of the 85% water they normally have. Its metabolism, growth, and reproduction are interrupted and may be in that state for years. Even in 2016, Japanese NIPR scientists managed to revive tardigrades that have been frozen for over 30 years. This state gives it a resistance that allows them to survive extreme cold and dry seasons, ionizing radiation, and resistance to heat and extreme pollution. Tardigrades have been found on the top of the Himalayas, in the depths of the ocean, and even in mud volcanoes. A tardigrade can withstand such cold temperatures of up to negative 200 degrees Celsius, that is, almost absolute zero, and so hot up to more than 100 degrees Celsius. In laboratory experiments, some tardigrades have survived the submersion in absolute alcohol. They can also survive very low and very high pressures. While you dive underwater, the pressure increases at a rate of one kilo per square centimeter after 10 meters deep. Already at 40 meters deep, the pressure equals nine atmospheres. Under these conditions, a common human being cannot survive. A professional diver could only for a few minutes. A tardigrade could survive under more than 1,000 atmospheres of pressure, which would be the depth of which the Mariana Trench is located. The tardigrades also withstand low pressure situations, such as in outer space, withstanding even direct solar radiation under such conditions. By the way, as far as radiation is concerned, a tardigrade can tolerate 1,000 times more compared to any other animal. Don't you think it's amazing? Well, in 2007, tardigrades proved to be the first animal to survive in outer space. A group of astronauts aboard the Photon M3 mission 
to carry out astrobiology research, managed to expose a group of tardigrades to the outer space situation and then rehydrate them on the Earth. The result was that some of them surprisingly survived. It is these surprising facts that feed the theory that tardigrades came to Earth in asteroids that fell before the Cambrian period. It is about the theory of panspermia. The issue is that fossils have been found that demonstrate that the tardigrade has been living on Earth for more than 500 million years, during which time it occurred inexplicably, which is known as the explosion of life or Cambrian explosion. And it seems that the journey of the tardigrades would not be over, because there are now thousands on the moon. This is because Israel sent a spacecraft with the mission of landing it on the moon, which failed, crashing on the lunar surface. But this spacecraft carried thousands of tardigrades that according to those in charge of this mission, would not have been damaged. It seems that if these tardigrades are brought back to Earth, they could be rehydrated, proving that they are still alive. This could show data about the effects of having that much time on the moon. I hope you learned something new today. If you want to know about top 10 unbelievable facts about the biggest shark ever, click on the video given on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.